What's up, man? What's up, man? Hey. hey. Je suis spécialisé dans le traitement des patients qui se prennent pour des super-héros. I played 23 in glass. I think he cut three out, so we you see 20. I think the Beast is the most challenging character. He's just so odd uh, and different. He had to be odd. You know, we don't have a lot of CGI. We've got a little bit, kind of making my veins pop a little bit more. You know, we don't have capes and we don't have CGI making me fly. We don't have crazy outfits. It's a little more base than normality. So uh, I had to do a lot of that super acting on my own. And you know, I could have just played him completely straight, but there's, I also played 19 other characters in this film and they're all just a bit more normal. So it, it became apparent that he had to be a little more heightened. And that's tricky because it's easy to go into the realms of bad acting. So he had to have a strange, interesting voice. He had to have a, a larger physicality, an animalistic physicality, and that expresses itself in the way that he reacts with others. So it, he was the trickiest. He was a character with whom it was easy to go into the realm of overacting and bad acting, and that was that was constantly in my mind. Ce que je mets en doute, c'est cette conviction que vous avez d'être surhumain. Et pourtant. what's not peculiar about it. It's like, you know, I try to kind of, as I was making Glass, tell you the movie that it's supposed to be. It's very unusual in that it's a, you know, a thriller and a comic book movie put together. It's, you know, in an insane asylum. It's 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 all played in one, in one claustrophobic place. It's not CGI driven. My action sequences are very much the dialogue sequences, you know? There's an 11 minute dialogue scene in there. The whole idea is what if it's real? If it, as long as it had that just a tinge of like connected to the real world a bit, you know, it's science and all, then then I'm okay. No one's gonna fly, and there's no lasers coming out of people's eyes. There's none of that's gonna happen in these movies. Je m'appelle Patricia. Je veux bien le croire. Vous avez une vingtaine d'identités. Je m'appelle Marie Reynolds. Por favor, señor. On a failli te choper. Elles semblent cohabiter en vous. Yeah, that was the strange thing. So, you know, you might be playing a character who's panicking and your heartbeat is going crazy. And then, but the next person that takes the light or comes to the fore or takes control, they might not be panicking. I can change my voice, I can change my physicality, but your heartbeat is still going and your face is still red. But what I noticed started to happen was that very quickly my heartbeat, much quicker than after a game of football or after time in the gym, my heartbeat would go boom, boom, boom. And that would happen strangely quickly. Puis-je rencontrer la bête J'espère pour toi qu'il va t'accepter. J'ai l'impression que les vilains sont en train de s'unir. It was a dream come true that what James was able to do with the part because it's it's all very minimal and beautiful. You know, I just have a close up and he can change from one personality to the next by just taking on the persona and then your physicality changes. Like, you know, a great actor doesn't doesn't start with the uh, intent the, the intended physicality. Like, if I want to do this, you know, they don't start with that. They think like a woman that's bored, and then and then and then and then this happens, you know. And he he think the right thoughts, and whatever the body does is correct. That's why I hire theater trained actors. And James is a brilliant theater actor. I don't cut, and I want to. They, they have to understand why I'm not cutting. I want you to commit and go, and it's dangerous and beautiful and real in the moment. Yeah, that's why I do theater trained actors a lot. Et vous. <laughs>